Thank you, Dave, and uh, thanks to all of you for uh, taking the time out of your day to be here. Um, I'm hoping to be able to pull together um, just some of what we've heard, along with um, showing some examples of exactly what David uh, or Dr. Rosero was just showing uh, in a more simplistic way of the financial modeling that that uh, we need to be doing behind the formulation uh, aspect. So um, with that, we'll, we'll get started and, okay, so uh, what have we heard? Um, again, formulation impact, we'll get into uh, some discussion around that and then, and then some financial modeling. Um, first of all, uh, Gordon told us uh, pretty clearly, and I think we've all seen the, the beginning of this, the, of, of added soy availability, um, crush capacity increasing, and we're hopeful that that carries a, a lower soybean meal price, but Gordon also indicated that there's some headwinds that are, are um, involved in that with some imported uh, oils and so on that are, again, a little bit of a headwind to the soy oil and the renewable diesel uh, aspects. The important things I think that we've heard on, uh, from a nutritionist standpoint, whether it be students or producers, I know we have a mix of a lot of different um, uh, people here today. We've heard about soy uh, net energy content. Um, I think that's a, a uh, very important one that I'd ask all you nutritionists and students to keep an open mind because there's, a, there's some good debate that can be had there, but I think there's also some really good evidence to show that something is uh, afoot here. And, and uh, again, keeping an open mind and, and thinking through uh, that is really important. Uh, Amy told us about uh, uh, the functional bioactive compounds and um, that, uh, again, probably has to do with um, uh, some of the productive energy that Dr. Gaines talked about and what we may be seeing there and calling net energy. So not all completely understood yet, but uh, again, fits well. And then uh, Dr. Rosero here showing uh, that, that there's good evidence that soybean meal should be the primary amino acid source in the summertime excluding maybe DDGs, uh, some crystalline amino acids, or at least having good control of those in our, in our formulation processes. So let's talk a little bit about then, how, how do we assess this opportunity? And again, we'll talk through formulation and then get into some of the financial modeling. Uh, but I think it's important to see that um, the higher net energy uh, uh, component um, of, of soybean meal, although, the, although if we change the, the um, uh, net energy content of soybean meal within the formulation process, we are going to have a different uh, interplay uh, with other ingredients in their net energy if we're, if we're balancing to a minimum net energy content. But there's also a number of things that are outside of the formulation process. And that's one thing that I, I really wanna send home here, and especially to you maybe young nutritionists or students, that, that as a nutritionist, when you sit down and you, you create a formula, the job isn't done. Um, because the LP uh, doesn't do everything for you and other than the constraints that you may put on the formula. There's, there's a lot of modeling that needs to go on beyond that of how are these diets that I've just created now going to perform and what is the cost impact of, of those diets. So again, please um, want that to be a key take home for anybody that's doing uh, feed formulation and or uh, uh, learning that. There's some things outside of the formulation that we need to account for. The, the uh, Functional uh, bioactive compounds, another excellent example. Uh, raise your hand if you're formulating and that you're, you're um, putting a minimum for an isoflavone in your formula. Probably not there yet. So we have to account for that outside of the formulation process if there is some 
mortality benefit or, or other aspects that uh, today we, we don't quite understand. And then as, as uh, uh, Dr. Rosero just showed us, there's good opportunity for soybean meal being the primary amino acid source, especially during the summer. So let's talk a little bit about cost revenue optimization or making a profit. I mean, how this is, we're in a really good environment uh, today within the pig industry to say, you know, how do, how do, we, how do we do things better from a cost standpoint? And um, uh, so let's talk through that a little bit. Again, the, the feed formulation process helps us get to a, 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 a feed program but it leaves us only with a cost. Um, so we're, we're putting constraints on a nutrient content of the diet, nutrient content of ingredients, ingredient costs, ingredient minimums and maximums. Uh, but again, it's, uh, again we, we come up with an invoice price as Dr. Rosero talked about. Um, the revenue calculation, as I've discussed, um, needs to occur outside of the, the formulation process itself. So this, this uh, table will, will uh, I think, mirror pretty well Dr. Van Houten's um, uh, suggested minimum soybean meal. If we look at this as what I'll get to here in a minute as, as an improved uh, diet or, or the, the summertime diet, um, you can see here that, that if we use this as a, as a summertime uh, feeding strategy, we, we would have maximum levels of, of distillers grains that are probably lower than what a lot of us would like to be using today based on the invoice price. Because replacing corn with distillers at the price that it is right now, you can sure drive the, the um, the formula cost down, but again, that outside of the formulation process um, activity that needs to go on will, um, with added gain and so on, uh, uh, turn us into a, a more, uh, a less revenue uh, capture situation. And I'll show you that uh, example here in a minute. So this one having, um, uh, minimum soybean meal contents across diets, maximum levels of crystalline lysine being suggested, and then maximum uh, levels of, of distillers. You'll also see there's a minimum level of, of DDGs uh, that's listed, and that being uh, 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 suggested because of the gut health um, aspects that have been shown in some research uh, relative to DDG use. As we begin to talk about formulation, there's some, um, I, would all, I, I would say, uh, mind bending, and Aaron, hopefully you would agree with me on this. Aaron and I have, have uh, talked through this a number of times as I've uh, worked my way through this net energy change that we're talking about in, in uh, soybean meal. There's a number of different ways that I think uh, you, you'd want to kind of think about that. One, unfortunately, there's, if we all left the room today and said, yeah, we're all believers in, in higher net energy, we can't assume that tomorrow pigs are gonna be converting at, you know, 15 points better feed conversion just because we've decided soybean meal has changed. That the pig has been consuming that higher net energy um, soybean meal and and it's we as nutritionists or scientists that needs, need to recalibrate. And we need to recalibrate around what are the studies that have been done that have created lysine to energy ratios that we think are right today, that if we say soybean meal is higher and net energy content are now different. Um, and so um, there's some options that we have as you consider how to handle this in formulation. Uh, th those options as we see them are maintain the SID lysine uh, to net energy ratio that you have today. Uh, you can maintain that SID lysine spec and let net energy float. And if that's a small enough amount, you know, I guess in, in my calculations, you, you may have a, 
uh, uh, one or two hundredths of a percent that you're adjusting SID lysine, so you may be comfortable in letting it float, but the more accurate would be is to recalibrate uh, to a new lysine to energy ratio. So uh, again, those two options, uh, recalibrate or um, to get a little bit more accurate in that is let your, let your formulation package recalibrate that and it will base it then on the amount of, of soybean meal and or DDGs that, that you're using in the formula. PIC is, is, I don't know if we have PIC reps here today, I thought for sure I'd see Wayne Cast, but um, um, they're, they're uh, uh, tracking with us on this and have, have provided this here recently to all of us to help you in recalculating those, those um, uh, lysine to energy ratios. And I'll, I'll really just leave it at that. There's a nice tool uh, that PIC has posted now and uh, will we'll allow for that um, recalculation uh, uh, just with the energy change. You have the option of setting your, your soybean meal to net energy ratio or whatever you would like and uh, SID lysine requirement stays the same, the energy changes and, and you've got a new uh, SID lysine to, uh, uh, to uh, energy ratio to formulate on. Okay, hopefully these are somewhat visible to you as far as the, the numbers themselves, but I'm gonna go through now, uh, first of all, an example of formulation difference as we utilize those, those uh, minimum soy or improved diet, as I indicated here a minute ago, uh, as compared to what I would just call traditional. Um, you can see in the, the the top oval there, I'll just work my way down through those, those ovals that I have. Um, uh, the first one is on the traditional program, you'll see the distiller's contents starting at uh, uh, 200 pounds in that late nursery diet, going to 400, 500, and then settling into a 250 for that last finishing diet. Um, diet costs there, uh, 272 to uh, 195. The, the program below and those formulas are, are around the minimum soy content, maximum DDGs. So you'll see the DDG level there being maximum of 125 pounds. And, um, and again, diet cost, if we look at specifically at the, the, the um, uh, first grower diet, so the second one in the column, we've got a 243.08 as compared to a 268, I think it is. So quite a difference in cost of those diets that are formulated to the same uh, specification. So you can see invoice price-wise, push distillers. If you've got a producer that wants cost, 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 you know, there, there you go. But remember, as a nutritionist or as a person advising them, you really, you know, you have to be on the camp of saying cost isn't, isn't everything here. I mean, there is a revenue component that needs to be considered because we're, we're not, uh, again, in the end, uh, invoice price of the feed doesn't, doesn't uh, cause the revenue. So let's talk a little bit about, and I'm going to get into, hopefully it won't be too simplistic for those of you that are into financial modeling, but hopefully it'll be okay for those that this may be a first view. What are the, uh, the cost and revenue considerations that we need to, uh, need to make? Um, first of all, on a cost side, we've got pig cost, of course. We've got feed cost, 70% of uh, the cost of producing a pig. Housing and care, medications, transportation. On the revenue side, uh, we're going to have uh, live sales, of course, and market hogs and uh, any coal and light heavy pigs, or, or uh, uh, yeah, coal light and heavy outside of uh, the window. And then the, the graph below really is to uh, suggest something similar to what Dr. Rosero talked about of having the opportunity to shift that weight curve to the right and depending on your marketing strategy and, and uh, space long, space short, and so on, 
uh, hit more pigs in, the, in the, the sweet spot of the packer grid. And again, that can be a revenue source if you're, if you're able to have more pigs in that, that uh, uh, premium spot. Okay, there's a couple of things here then on, on uh, cost um, that are uh, feed price and, uh, and are a formulation impact, um, the ingredients and formulation, and then a cost of, of uh, certainly can be uh, average daily gain in a, in a fixed uh, time system, and of course any mortality um, uh, is gonna be a cost to the the, uh, the grow out. Revenue, um, we've got carcass price, of course, which is an uncontrollable, basically, uh, but two things that are within the formulation impact, and that's carcass weight, um, as Dr. Rosero showed in uh, formulation and, and um, uh, the ability to maintain some, some carcass weight, and then the number of full value pigs sold, again, if you get more into that, um, that sweet spot of the packer grid. So let's go through again some relatively simplistic, but this will build out the picture of how you as a nutritionist um, or student thinking about modeling financially, how, we, how you would go about it. Here's the buckets of, of um, costs that I talked about a minute ago. Got your feed program, your formulation after applying a budget to it, um, $70.88 on feeding program A, $75.80 on feeding program B, the, the improved program. So again, if you stopped there and just looked at feed, you'd say, well, I'll go with A and that's, that's the right choice. You haven't considered revenue. So adding up the other Costs, which I've just got listed as the same, a pig cost, housing cost, you end up with a 156.88 cost uh, in A and 161.80 uh, for the program B. Now if we add revenue into that and consider what uh, could be a weight change difference, begin uh, using uh, 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 numbers that uh, Dr. Van Houten and, and uh, Dr. Rosero showed as summer weight dip or low DDG uh, minimum soy type weight differences. Now we've got something that on the revenue side, we're selling pigs in the, into the same market, uh, 75 cent on a live value. Um, full value pigs, I'm not putting any difference there, but again, we've talked about the opportunity to possibly get additional revenue uh, 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 in that aspect. Now total revenue, we have 210.75 and 217.59 um, on the improved program. And if we look then at what is the net margin, uh, net those two out, we can see that that there's a dollar ninety-two per pig advantage to the higher cost feeding program because of the additional revenue that we have in 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 the weight um, aspect. So these numbers are like any modeling situation change every day. I mean that's the reason that you know answers uh, the questions the same. The answer changes when. Corn price changes, soy price changes, market price changes, and, and so models need to be dynamic and, and looked at um, um, you know, consistently. But again, in this example, um, uh, $1.92 a head would, would be an estimate. So with those, uh, that type of model being set up, again, Excel, you know, this, uh, please, uh, if, you, if you're not doing this today, this doesn't need to be a, a difficult um, uh, setup. Um, but you can get into some really nice uh, sensitivity tables by just doing different iterations of that model that you have set up. Well, okay, the $1.92 that I have circled here is, is the, the model that I just showed you the aspects of, but if I change uh, my soy cost at 375 or 400 or 425 or 450, and my market price at various um, market prices. You can see then 
the picture of where, where does this program work and under what market prices does it work and when does it go underwater? Because at some point, the, the value of the weight isn't going to overcome a, a cost of diet difference and, and um, that needs to be considered. So this would be uh, the example of what I would say the, the one pig modeling where mortality is really, you really can't consider here. A return per head on just modeling out a 2,400 head group where you uh, can show mortality difference and then added saleable pounds is another way to express that and I think more accurate. And in this case then, um, the $350 soy dollar market price turns into a $2.81 per head advantage. So different ways of expressing and you know, again accuracy of, of what, it, what are you modeling and, and as close to real life production as possible. So in, in summary, um, hopefully we've gotten across here the, the feed formulation um, um, process uh, isn't the end of, of what needs to be done to really assess what we've talked about today. I mean, it's, uh, there's financial modeling that needs to go uh, behind that. Uh, areas of potential revenue, carcass weight, market sales, uh, percentage of full value pigs. And then for any of you out there from uh, universities or companies or whatever it may be, uh, the, the uh, would be up for uh, considering and hosting a potential tool. I think there's a real opportunity for a new tool to be created, very similar to what the, I mean, K-State and PIC have linked up on some. Iowa State has some uh, models that are out there, but I think there's a great opportunity that would be used by the industry to, to uh, create a model around this very um, uh, situation that we've been talking about. So thank you very much uh, for your attention and um, look forward to any questions that you have in the upcoming question and answer.